See, this aspect modern synthetic theory is related to the field of evolutionary biology. See, after 1900, so many biologists who were working in the field of genetics or evolutionary biology or those who were studying morphological aspects of organisms, they were able to gain ideas that how do genetic variation arise in the uh, individuals of a population. Because by that time, the Mendelian laws of inheritance were well understood and uh, the Darwin's concept of natural selection that was also clear to the people. So, it was Julian Huxley who wrote a book and the title of the book is Evolution, the Modern Synthesis. This book was published in 1942 and in this particular book he gave the idea of modern synthetic theory. But see, so many other biologists, as I just said, that geneticists, evolution biologists, naturalists, uh, like these, you know, these are stalwarts, Julian Huxley, 1942, who actually wrote the book. Then another important person, Ernst Meyer, he was uh, working in the field of evolution biology and uh, taxonomy. Then Theodosius Dobzhansky, a population geneticist, J.B.S. Halden, uh, G.L. Stebbins, Seval Wright, R.A. Fisher. So all these persons, uh, they were able to synthesize a view that how do uh, individuals of a population accumulate variations among them and how such population may gain the status of a new species. So how evolutionary changes take place among the individuals of a species, that concept was actually developed by these people. And then uh, they gave the uh, idea about the synthetic theory of evolution. So, and since it was uh, actually proposed during 1942, they gave the term modern. Otherwise, people simply call it synthetic theory of evolution. Are they also called this to be neo-Darwinian theory because it was proposed after the Darwin, you know. So this particular theory merges the concept of Darwinian evolution with Mendelian genetics. And it describes the evolution of life in terms of genetic changes occurring in the population that leads to the formation of new species. And the major concepts under this theory include genetic variations, reproductive and geographical isolation, and natural selection. Now, the major factors which are responsible for evolution are actually these you know, factors like mutation, selection, migration, genetic drift, recombination, isolation, and hybridization. You can count these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are seven main or important factors which are actually responsible for evolution. Mutation, mutation actually, it is of prime importance. And mainly, you know, point mutation or nucleotide changes. Presently, we consider mutation as point mutation or nucleotide changes. But when they gave this concept, this mutation actually dealt with chromosomal as well as nucleotide changes. When we consider chromosomal changes, we in fact consider structural and numerical changes in the chromosome. And definitely, yes, uh, if we go on analyzing the different species, we may find a variation in the number of chromosomes or variation in the structure of chromosome. So, uh, structural changes or numerical changes in the chromosome that also leads to speciation. And it actually helps us to uh, identify different genera, different families, and different even orders. So, chromosomal changes, uh, since uh, occur at the grass level, they are mainly responsible uh, to form, you know, higher taxonomic categories. 
So mutation is one of the major factors. Then selection, mainly natural selection, or it could be even artificial selection. Artificial selection means uh, that kind of selection where human's involvement is there, where human is purposely doing something, okay, to select uh, certain kinds of uh, individuals of a particular type, maybe in case of plants or in animals. Then migration, that is gene flow, genetic drift, which deals with founder or bottleneck effect. So I will explain these factors one by one and uh, let us consider the first one that is mutation. We know that mutation is a sudden change in the genetic material. So those changes which are inheritable and in fact occur in the germ cells, they actually cause uh, variation in the genetic material and uh, chromosomal mutations may be due to chromosomal changes particularly particularly in the structure like deletion or duplication or inversions and translocation so these are structural changes in the chromosome and changes in the number also so uh, particularly in case of plants we find that number variation in the chromosome that leads to formation of new species mutation produces a variety of changes that may be harmful and there could be advantageous mutations also, which may be selected by natural selection. And gradually small changes get accumulated over time. So these mutations cause variation in the population. So mutation is one of the major factors because it uh, creates a variation in the genetic material. And we all individuals differ from each other because of mutational changes. Mutations, in fact, create new alleles uh, in the genetic material. The other factor is selection, which I just said could be natural selection or artificial selection. Actually, it deals with differential survival and reproduction of individuals uh, of a population. So that is selection. So organisms that are better adapted to the environment are selected by nature and uh, natural selection produces a change in the frequency of the genes from one generation to the other favoring the differential form of reproduction. Then the third fact factor is gene flow which is actually migration. That is because of migration the, uh, and, and the individuals who migrate to a different population, if they establish reproductive relationship over there, then there definitely there will be, uh, that will affect gene frequency in that population. So gene flow is due to immigration or emigration of individuals from one population to another. If the migration occurs multiple times, then it leads to gene flow and changes the allele or gene frequency of the population. So it is uh, one of the factors which causes variation uh, due to gene flow. So <clears throat> this happens in case of animals as well as in case of plants and other kinds of organisms also because in case of plants even the pollen grains may uh, migrate to long distances. So uh, this is a factor which occurs in all sorts of organisms. Then genetic drift, any change in the gene or allele frequency of a population due to sudden or random changes is referred to as genetic drift. And it occurs due to chance events. Genetic drift is more prominent in a small population. So we know about founder effect that is, if a new population is founded um, at a place just by few individuals, then that population may be genetically quite different from the parental population. Bottleneck is, uh, neck effect is another, you know, way by which genetic drift actually occurs. Then the next factor is recombination. Genetic recombination is a process by which new combination of alleles are formed and the genetic recombination occurs during sexual reproduction at the time of gamete formation. There occurs an exchange of genetic material between 
non sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes during meiosis you may know that this process is known as crossing over so crossing over produces new combination of genes and uh, such new combinations make raw materials for evolution to act upon so it leads to the combination of genes and is one of the causes of genetic variability present within a population then the other factor could be isolation see the isolation helps in preventing the interbreeding of related organisms which is a reproductive form of isolation and this could be premating reproductive isolation that is reproductive isolation occurring uh, before mating or it could be post mating reproductive isolation there are a number of factors which cause such kind of reproductive isolation because two species maintain their identity only because of uh, reproductive isolation they are reproductively isolated from each other they may mature at different period of time and uh, the uh, reproductive structures may be varying in different species so uh, they become separate species only because a reproductive isolation gets established uh, between or amongst them and the last factor is hybridization because hybridization between two species increases the genetic variability of the population and hybridization may cause speciation the hybrid population may show sexual isolation with its parental populations so these are seven major factors which uh, are not actually separate they work together and cause variation among the individuals of a population and which are actually the major uh, causes of evolution to take place so uh, i explained all these things in very brief and hope that this much information would be useful to understand this particular subject